PS19, Extreme East Texas, Spring Into Action is sponsored by Stonewater Roofing. Good evening, East Texas, and welcome to our CBS 19 Spring Weather Special, Spring Into Action. I'm Chief Meteorologist Brett Anthony, along with Chandler Jordan and Savannah Hale. Over the next half hour, we're going to talk about a wide variety of topics, including the ham radio community here in East Texas and how they play a vital role in gathering severe weather information. We'll also look ahead to the spring forecast. Severe weather systems are common in East Texas in the spring, so it's important to have a safety plan, especially if you live in a mobile home. Coming up, we'll review your mobile home safety plan and we'll take a look at stargazing in East Texas. With severe weather season approaching, let's talk about how hail forms and how big it can get depending on our thunderstorm. Speaking of thunderstorms, we all remember the line of thunderstorms that came through East Texas last April. It was that powerful line that moved through the Azalea District and did widespread damage. We start tonight by looking back at that storm and how folks have recovered. So it was on April 12th and yeah, that, like I will, I'll never forget that, that day. We all have a day etched in our mind. For Emily Gora, it's April 12th, 2022. Yeah, in my head, it's just like, oh, April 12th, April 12th. And I can bring that data probably more than I could bring like somebody's birthday up or something because April 12th has just stuck in my mind as just this like insane Tuesday. A Tuesday evening when a storm devastated Tyler's historic Azalea District. Yeah, so it was right here um, where that kind of middle sidewalk is. Uh, it was about a hundred foot oak tree. Um, probably about like six foot in diameter and it fell right across here. The storm's winds blasted through the Azalea District and uprooted the tree in front of Gore's home on Mockingbird Lane. She just moved in six months before the storm and this fallen oak devastated her home. This whole flat side right here was completely gone. Our chimney was completely gone. Um, our front door kind of like Facade was still there, but the front was gone, or the roof was gone. From Mockingbird Lane, up and down Chilton and Rusk Streets, across College and Dobbs, 100-year-old trees snapped. Power was out for two days. Homes suffered major damage. But somehow, the storm spared Pyron Garden. Oh, I remember it well. Pyron Gardens is on the Azalea Trail. Joan Pyron cares for the flowers, shrubs, and bushes. Her daily walk was cut short. The storm chased her into her garage. It came with a sound she's never heard before. I don't know how to explain it, just a lot of noise. Just, I mean, you knew something was going on, and then it quit. It was just dismay. I mean, it was, um, you, you couldn't believe it. The National Weather Service issued the tornado warning right around sunset. That's when radar indicated a possible tornado moving through the Azalea District. As that rotation passed, howling winds came in behind it. A survey team for the National Weather Service a few days later found that it was 100 mile an hour straight line winds that did the damage in the Azalea District. Pyron's called the Azalea District home for more than 20 years and can't remember storm damage like the district experienced last spring. You know, we have little storms and things, and you break a few, few little branches and that kind of thing, but not anything like that. The storm spared Pyron's garden. Neighbors weren't so lucky. The storm forever changes the landscape of the Azalea District. Some signature trees are gone. I've had to, and, and my neighbor that lost the seven trees, you have to change the way that you set flowers out and bushes out and things like that, because where there was shade, there is no more. The Azalea Trail bounced back from the 2021 winter freeze. Last year's 100 mile an hour winds and a recent ice storm have done additional damage. But hope springs eternal, and there is hope the Azalea Trails will bounce back again and show out better than ever. Obviously, there's gonna be some trees missing that were here last year, um, but, Ultimately, I think it'll still be beautiful. Back on Mockingbird Lane, a year after the storm, Emily Gora says she's loved this house because of its historic charm, including the original 1920s hardwood floors. The floors couldn't be saved, but Gora's found a way to keep the classic appeal. But, you know, we really tried to keep it true to the neighborhood and kind of make sure it still looked like it fit in. And now, a year later, she says it's time to put the storm behind her. 
all in all, we're back in. It's back in better than ever. It's we're still in our house. We're still in our neighborhood. We're you know. All, all is well, we can kind of move forward. A storm such as the Azalea District really illustrates why it's so important to have a plan in place before severe weather strikes. And that really comes into importance when we're talking about manufactured and mobile home safety. Meteorologist Chandler Jordan recently talked with the National Weather Service about new guidelines they've implemented when it comes to mobile home and manufactured home safety. We just heard from Chief Meteorologist Brett Anthony, who shared with us what homeowners have gone through to recover from the widespread damage that occurred in Tyler's historic Azalea District. Those homes were built to withstand strong winds, but Mother Nature proved to be too much. When compared to a mobile or manufactured home, it's critical to have a safe and sturdy structure to seek shelter in. So for like a, a single wide like this behind me, it only takes EF1 tornado winds. So we're talking 90 to 100 mile per hour winds that can lift a mobile home like this up, throw it and completely destroy it. This is why we emphasize you can replace your possessions, but you can't replace a life. Actually, in 2022 in the United States, we had 23 tornado fatalities. 15 of those were people in mobile homes. In our local area, all four of our tornado fatalities were people that lived in mobile homes. So we're talking a matter of life and death. So you might be wondering, is there anything I can do to protect my family? Thankfully, the National Weather Service has created a three-step plan for you and your loved ones to follow this severe weather season. So step one, and you can do this today, is to make a plan. Know uh, where to go. So you. A mobile or manufactured home is not a safe place, so you need to identify a family or friend that has a single family home nearby that you can go and evacuate to. Once you identify your safe place, keep an eye on our CBS 19 forecast so you'll be ready for the next round of severe weather. Step two is the day before when severe weather is forecast, you want to verify that that is a safe place to go that you can go. So call a friend or family member to make sure you can evacuate the next day. When it's the day of and our next storm system arrives, you'll need to be ready to take action sooner than you might think. The final step, step three, is the day of the severe weather, and that's when you have to take action. When a tornado watch is issued, that's when we want people to evacuate their mobile and manufactured homes. If you wait until a tornado warning is issued and the storms hit, you might not have enough time to get to safety. Having a severe weather plan will make all the difference when protecting your family from Mother Nature. If you follow this three-step plan, you'll be ready to spring into action when it matters most. CBS 19, Extreme East Texas, Spring Into Action is sponsored by Stonewater Roofing.